If you're anything like me, you've made a lot of mistakes in your life. And I mean a lot. Anything from those cringy moments where you're waving back at someone that wasn't actually waving at you in the first place, to replying all on a company-wide email, <laughs> to something like hurting someone that you really care about because of something you said or did in a moment of anger. If I asked you to think about a mistake you've made in your life, I'm sure they'd run the gamut. Also, if you're anything like me, you were never necessarily taught how to make mistakes. I grew up in an immigrant household in the US. My parents were born and raised in Malaysia and Taiwan, and when they came to the States, they brought along with them what many would consider traditional Chinese values. Things like hard work, discipline, diligence. In part because of these values, from a young age, I learned to attribute the mistakes that I made to carelessness. And that carelessness came with consequences. Dishonoring my parents, wasting time or money, doing poorly in a class, and the like. Now, I don't blame my parents. They come from a long line of families and societal cultures that use fear and shame as a way to deter mistakes. So because I learned to equate mistakes with carelessness, I decided to become the exact opposite, an extremely, extremely careful person. I lived and operated from a place of anxiety, of fear, of shame, and of the deeply rooted need to never, ever mess up. So as I grew older, I got to experience just how unsustainable this perfectionism really is. An unwillingness to make mistakes leads to an unwillingness to try new things, to take risks, and most importantly, to take accountability when we've done something wrong. In the past few years, though, I've gotten to discover a new way to do things. Here at Yale and US College, I oversee our disciplinary conduct and sexual misconduct processes. I believe so strongly in learning from our mistakes that I made it my job. I often find that students feel terrified to meet with me. They have an overwhelming level of shame or are defensive and see the conversation as the art of war. It's here where I noticed that few of us, if any, are really ever taught how to hold ourselves accountable. So how do we overcome this? Is there a better way to make mistakes? In trying to answer this question a year ago, I did a common therapeutic exercise for those looking to understand themselves better, writing a letter to my younger self. And in this letter, I wrote myself how to make mistakes in seven steps that I get to share with you today. Throughout these steps, I'll also share a personal story that illustrates how I learned to repair my relationship with mistakes. So let's start with step one. Try to do what you can not to make a mistake in the first place. Now, I know this sounds contradictory to everything I've just said so far, but the reality is sometimes we do do things we know are wrong, or we do things with the intention to hurt people. Other times, we don't know we're making a mistake or the impact it could have on someone. See, there's a difference between operating with a level of caution that's debilitating and being aware and intentional with our thoughts and our actions. We do the best we can with who we are and what we know at any given moment. After all, they say you don't know what you don't know. And when I was in high school, there was a lot that I didn't know. Given my relationship with mistakes, I tried not to make them. But what would the teenage years be without a little bit of trial and error? That brings us to step two. Inevitably make a mistake somewhere along the line because you are a human and not a robot. 
Even being able to admit we've made a mistake requires us to humble ourselves. But sometimes our pride, our ego, or just plain stubbornness get in the way. And this is where a lot of us get stuck. For some people, really being able to acknowledge their mistakes requires hitting rock bottom, getting in trouble, or hurting someone that they love. For me, the situation that taught me the most on how to acknowledge my mistakes was being on the receiving end of someone else's mistake. I was a teenager when a man in his early 20s groomed me online. Grooming often involves engaging in manipulative behaviors to establish an emotional connection, often for exploitative purposes. Now, at the time, neither of us recognized what was happening as harmful. Eventually, we lost touch, went our separate ways, and I went on with my life, not thinking much of it. But then, into adulthood, and after a lot of reflection, I realized that it did have an impact on me in many ways. See, being able to recognize your own emotions when there's harm is such an important part of the process, both for the person experiencing and causing that harm. Which brings us to step three. Let yourself feel all of the emotions that come up for five minutes. Shame, guilt, sadness, frustration with yourself, and so on. This is not an easy step. It looks different for different people. Many of us will take much longer than five minutes. Some people might want to do this with a safe person. The point of this step is to allow yourself to feel. A natural reaction to negative emotions is to push them away. But this step challenges us to hold it. About eight years after this man and I lost touch, I was scrolling on Instagram one day, and he showed up in my reels. I froze. I could not believe it. It felt like a sign that time had in fact not healed that wound, but instead it was now in my hands to do something about it. A few days later, I decided I was going to tell him how what he did hurt me. I had no idea how he was going to react. I imagined that he might blow up, blame me, deny it, or hang up the phone and block me. But what I hoped he would do is embrace step four. Give yourself a hug and hold yourself. Tell yourself it's actually okay that you made a mistake because you are a human being. Be gentle, patient, and loving with yourself. You are deserving of grace. Many people in our society want people who've made mistakes, especially crimes, to feel intense shame and regret. I'll say for myself, no meaningful change in my life has ever, ever come from a place of shame. Shame so often comes with self-hatred, and people who hate themselves don't usually value themselves enough to work towards change. So maybe you're the type of person that believes it's okay to make mistakes, just not those mistakes, or not mistakes that big, or not mistakes that hurt people like that. I would never make a mistake like that. All of these qualifiers get in the way. Once we can accept that mistakes are so often a product of nuanced societal pressures, familial upbringing, and individual choices, then we can really get to work. For a long time, I blamed myself for putting myself in a position to be groomed. It took years for me to forgive myself. But showing yourself grace allows you to extend that grace to others, too, and that is a beautiful thing. So I called the man, 
and I told him how I experienced the situation. How it changed the way that I look at relationships and the impact it had on my self-image and my mental health. His response brings us to step five. Apologize and repair harm with anyone that was affected by your mistake. I'm a firm believer in restorative justice, which calls us to recognize the harm we've done, who we've harmed, and how we can repair that harm. The ethos of restorative justice hinges on our ability to admit we've made a mistake. When I think of apologizing, I don't think of the golden rule of treat others how you want to be treated. Instead, we should focus on treating others how they want to be treated. Because how you might want harm repaired could look very different than how someone else might want harm repaired. He took accountability. He didn't make excuses. He listened to me attentively, acknowledged the hurt that he caused me, and explained himself. I know justice looks different for different people, but for me, in a matter of minutes, he gave me more healing than I ever would have experienced from a justice system. He also committed to step six. Make an honest commitment to not making the same mistake with room for error and gentle understanding. Our ability to change as people is a gift. Striving to grow into a better version of ourselves is a courageous thing. It's important to remember that while growth is an intentional process, it's not linear. It's not about forwards or backwards steps, but rather recognizing where you are now and how far you'd come. And lastly, step seven. Repeat steps one through six for the rest of your life. We will never be perfect. We'll be making mistakes until the day we die. It is a symptom and a blessing of being human. So if you, like so many of us, struggle to make mistakes, I hope these steps can give you the space and the grace to mess up and, more importantly, own up. The reality is these steps aren't a perfect guidebook. There isn't one way to make mistakes. And rarely, if ever, can something as complex as accountability be whittled down into a roadmap of prescribed steps. I invite you to use these to build a framework for how you might start to develop a healthy relationship with mistakes. I'll end today with some words of wisdom from the iconic Ted Lasso. I hope that either all of us or none of us are judged by the actions of our weakest moments, but rather by the strength we show when and if we're ever given a second chance. Thank you.